All right, let's take a look at the phrase tree of life. So for me, this is uh, very interesting. And so I wanna share my thoughts regarding the tree of life. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with the tree of knowledge of good and evil. All right, and it was the serpent that beguiled Eve and she ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So let's paint the scenario. In the Garden of Eden, we had all these trees that they could eat from all the sorts of trees we might see today you know for example I have a couple of apple trees I can go outside I can pull an apple off the tree and I can eat from it there's also the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil now let's go look here Verse 9, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, they're free to eat of every tree in the garden. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat, thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Okay, so this is interesting. Because here we have a scenario where God is saying you can eat of all these trees, but not of this tree. It's just like, let's say you have a six-year-old child, and you're in the kitchen, and you make a big batch of chocolate chip cookies, and you put those chocolate chip cookies into a cookie jar and then you turn to your six-year-old child and you say do not eat these chocolate chip cookies they're for later okay do not eat these and then you walk out of the room for 10 minutes and you come back 10 minutes later I guarantee you there's going to be at least one missing chocolate chip cookie. 100 out of 99 times. <clears throat> Excuse me. 100 out of 99 times. There's going to be a missing chocolate chip cookie. Guaranteed. This is an example of what we're reading here in Genesis chapter 2 God says you can eat of all these trees except for these chocolate chip cookies don't eat these chocolate chip cookies and then as soon as God turns his back what happens Adam and Eve eat the chocolate chip cookies it happened guaranteed so now, because they ate the chocolate chip cookies, God had to kick them out of the kitchen. So you can't come in the kitchen or the Garden of Eden. All right, now because they're removed 
from the Garden of Eden. They're also removed from the tree of life. Okay, so let's go here. And again, keep in mind that out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to his sight, to the sight, excuse me, and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So now because they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, now they can no longer eat from the tree of life. They're not free to eat of the tree of life like they were because remember God said of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat that included the tree of life okay but because they were forbidden to eat the tree of knowledge of good and evil and because they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil they were kicked out of the garden and no longer were they free to eat of the tree of life. At this point they needed somebody to come along and free them. Right? And somebody does come along and free them. Oh, see, I don't know nothing. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And that's what Jesus does. He frees us. And if he frees us, then we are free indeed. And that includes free to eat of the tree of life which was in the midst of the garden that Adam and Eve had access to until the serpent beguiled Eve. He tricked her. He tricked her and she and Adam ate the chocolate chip cookies. Right. Now they need somebody to come along. They were able to do it themselves. They were able to freely eat the chalk the excuse me, eat the tree of life, just not the chocolate chip cookies. And because they didn't have the knowledge of good and evil, they didn't realize how good they had it. Now they, that is, we, have the knowledge of good and evil. But in order to have the tree of life, we need Jesus Christ. Alright, and I want to take a look at all these mentions of the tree of life. Okay, and uh, well, let, let's go to Genesis 3 first and Adam and unto Adam he said because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee saying thou shalt not eat of it cursed is the ground for thy sake in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life so think about this, everything that we eat today comes from the ground. Even we come from the ground. So 
everything we eat comes from the ground and so you think about knowledge uh, imagine a world without any growth all right imagine a world where we didn't have to depend on fruit that's grown from the ground imagine a world where we didn't have to depend on things that we build in or knowledge that we have attained right so you got the things that grow from the ground and then you've got also the fruit of knowledge all right imagine if that was all done away with what would there be left because everything that we do in our life is based on the growth of a tree you know or or things that we've built up all right you think of a plant it grows it builds up into something useful so also do we with our hands build up something that is useful all right whether it be knowledge whether it be from the ground everything in our life consists of knowledge now imagine if that was all done away with that our life no longer consisted of this sort of knowledge I'm not sure I could I'm not sure I could comprehend it because almost I am every facet of our life is dependent on this sort of growth all right so let's go to verse 22 and the Lord God said behold the man is become as one of us to know good and evil and now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever so in, in case there's any confusion about that let's properly understand what happened here so because they ate of the tree of good of the knowledge excuse me of good and evil God had to place them out of the garden like it says here lest he put forth his hand and also eat of the tree of life right so now that they're they've been um, obtained I guess um, this knowledge of good and evil no longer is the tree of life available freely for them to eat of um, like I said uh, before it's gonna take somebody to come along and free them from that uh, so that they may eat of the tree of life and that someone is the Lord Jesus Christ Verse 24, so he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way, to keep the way of the tree of life. So now it's guarded, right? And the only way to have access to the tree of life is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, and so let's scroll down a little bit. Um, let's uh, let's read this uh, Proverbs three because this is great stuff. It really is. Right, so 
It's talking about a tree of life. She is a tree of life. So let's be sure to understand what this means. So I like to do this. Uh, when you read something, when you're doing word searches like this, it's important that you understand every single mention of the particular word or phrase that you're searching for. Right? So for example, I, if I was unsure of what this was talking about, I could go to Proverbs 3, open up the chapter, and just read the whole thing. But for uh, the sake, of, for your sake, for time consideration, let's just, let's start here at verse 13. I should probably read 12. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrects, even as a father the son in whom he delights. So this goes to, you know, um, once saved, always saved. Because you hear people arguing that oh, if you sin, you lose your salvation. As if um, you, you can't be saved, right? Because we all sin. And that's why we need a Savior. It's because we realize, we recognize that we cannot do it ourselves. So we believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ who has done it all. Now, it's wrong to sin. It's never okay to sin. And if we should sin, then the Lord that loves us will correct us. Just like you would correct your own child if your child did something wrong. You wouldn't kick him out of the house. Not if you loved him. You say, son, I told you not to eat these cookies. You ate them. Now get the H-E double hockey sticks out of the house. I don't want you here no more. That You're not going to do that if you love the child. Right? You love the child, you'll correct them. You'll say, hey, look, I'm making supper. you got to eat supper first before you eat them chocolate chip cookies or what have you. All right, so happy is the man that finds wisdom. And the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. And all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retains her. The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth. By understanding has he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul, and grace to thy neck. I think that's, I mean, you, I could read the whole thing, but I would encourage you, uh, if you haven't read it for a while, for sure, uh, it's great. It's a great chapter. Chapter 3. Okay. So shall they be life unto thy soul. That is wisdom and understanding. And grace to thy neck. Without the grace of God, we got no chance. Right? So let's go back to in Proverbs 11. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, 
and he that wins souls is wise. So let me just make a comment here. He that wins souls is wise. This is in reference to making a friend. You're not gonna save anybody's soul. You can't even save your own soul. Now I've heard people suggest that this winning souls is saving souls. It's winning it's not and that's not it at all. It's making a friend. All right, you win somebody's soul, you've made a friend. All right, you can't save nobody. You can't even save your own soul. Proverbs 13, <clears throat> excuse me, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. So we have hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is a tree of life, the hope that we have for our Lord Jesus Christ. Um who gives us eternal life. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Now this is a good one for those who like to use foul language, in particular the F word. Now if you could remove the F word from your speech, that would go a long ways for you uh, to have control over your own tongue and to have a wholesome tongue. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. I've known people who can't say one sentence without using the F word. Right Now, I'm not opposed. The, let, listen, the F word by itself is just a word. That's not a problem. The problem is the way in which people use the F word. They almost always exclusively use the F word in a cursory sort of way, as a curse word, a cuss word. If they were to use it in the way that it's, um, you know, Instead of saying, uh, you know, Adam knew his wife, you know, they, they replaced knew with, um, you know, the F word. You can't really argue that. Technically, it's correct, and it's not used in a cursory sort of way. But because that word is used so often as a curse word, I don't feel it appropriate for me to use that word in place of knew. I find it more appropriate to say Adam knew his wife. You, you know what it means. There's no confusion about that. There shouldn't be any confusion at all about that. So therefore it's not necessary to use the F word instead of the word knew. You see what I'm saying? So, but again, a perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. So if you use perverse words, it is a breach in the spirit. So it is better to speak with a wholesome tongue than to use foul language. Something to think about, right? All right, so now we get into Revelation. He that has an ear, excuse me, Revelation 2, verse 7, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And of course, the tree of life is everlasting life, right? And he that overcomes is he that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you think about today, I mean, my goodness, it seems like it takes a miracle for anybody to get saved in today's world because the world is so shaped against the Word of God it, it just seems like it's it has to be a miracle for anybody 
to be saved today. And, and in fact, I that's, I would argue that that it can only be by a miracle. Because when you start out a child in the public school system and that child is taught everything against the Word of God and they're formed all throughout their youth to believe things that are opposed to the Word of God, what chance do they have as, as an adult to believe in the Word of God? You know, it takes a miracle for them to turn from their unbelief their brainwashed mindset, their brainwashed worldview to the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing short of a miracle. And I contend it's getting harder and harder for young people to be saved today. That's why it's so important, if you are saved, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's nothing more important in anybody's life than to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Revelation 22, verse 2. In the midst of the streets, excuse me, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So if you wanted, you could go read the whole chapter of 22 and see that the context of this is in the life hereafter. It's not present day, but in the life to come. All right, in verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So the context of this verse is that right now, blessed are they that do His commandments, that is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, so that they might have, that they may have right to the tree of life. It may enter in through the gates into the city, the city of everlasting life, the new city of God, the holy city the new Jerus new Jerusalem okay all right so that's it I just want to talk about the tree of life to me it's interesting to understand that and uh, you know one thing that I pointed out at the beginning is that there are three different kinds of trees in the Garden of Eden the, the kinds of trees that grow from the ground that's one kind and then the tree of life, that's another kind. And then the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All right, one more time. Every tree, let's, let's do it this way, out of the ground, every tree. That's one kind of tree. And then there's the tree of life, that's another kind of tree. And then there's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. All right, so we have access to this tree and to that tree right now. But not everybody has the tree of life right now. We can only have the tree of life if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other way. And again, if the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed.